Welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about practical research third quarter lessons. Here are the lessons that we will discuss. Lesson number one, introduction to qualitative research. Research is derived from the French word rechercher, which means to go about seeking. The prefix of re means again, while the word search means to explore, seek, look, or investigate. Research must have validity, which means it shall have an accurate result, and it also has to have reliability, which means when repeated, it will still yield the same result. Research is when someone conducts a study to collect information and analyze ideas to further increase our understanding of some phenomenon in the world. Research is important to explore new fascinating ideas, provide opportunities to solve a modern problem, avoid misinformation, feed our curiosity, and help with decision making. Qualitative research is based on the disciplines of social sciences such as sociology, psychology, and anthropology. It means that the study will be more relating to the nature or standard of something with descriptive data. In qualitative research, the interviewer or researcher also tries to understand the participant's motivation, opinion about something, experience, beliefs, and feelings. A qualitative researcher shouldn't change the answers of their participants whether they like what they had said or not. Qualitative research is defined as a market research method that focuses on obtaining data through open-ended and conversational communication. This method is not only about what people think. This type of research paper should not just be contented with a basic answer such as yes or no. It focuses more on their explanation as to why they think a certain way. When writing a research paper, all verbs must be written in past tense. In grade 11, qualitative research is commonly taught, while in grade 12, quantitative with statistical treatment is taught. Unlike quantitative, Qualitative research does not use any number or statistic for the data gathering and interpretation. Lesson number two, making a research title. Before making a title, we must consider the significance of the proposed topic to the community. If it proposes a solution to a relevant problem, to discover something new, or to even spread awareness, as long as the purpose has any benefit to society, it will be a good topic to conduct research on. We must also be realistic and considerate, especially regarding the availability of the data, financial resources, and time constraints. Our topic must be new. If the chosen topic had already been done by another researcher, we must avoid doing the same conducted study or we can be plagiarized. Plagiarism is when someone copies or takes other people's work and claiming it as their own without providing any proper credit to the original creator. It is a big no-no in research. These are the guidelines for formulating the title. For example, I want to make a study about Filipino immigrants and migrants and what was the reasoning behind them moving to another country and what was the aftermath of their decision regarding themselves. The first title was Philippines, the highest number of immigrants in the subregion, the causes and effects of immigration and migration. On the first proposed title, you can see that it's way too long and broad. It's not very specific since according to the word, the highest number of immigrants in the subregion, it indicates that the researcher must find out why Philippines has a lot of immigrants compared to other subregions. Another objective was to study the causes and effects of immigration and migration. It also says the Philippines. It was not very specific since does it indicate a whole country, as all region will be included in the study? Of course not, since it will take a lot of time and there are way too many population in the Philippines. The second proposed title was The Causes and Effect of Immigration and Migration in the Philippines. It may look fine, but there is also a problem here since whom are we exactly talking about? Do the target participants include all the people in the Philippines, including foreigners, leaving the country? According to the main objective, my target is only Filipinos, not including foreigners who moved here. This leads to the last proposed title which is the cause and effect of the life of an immigrant and migrant Filipinos. Here the title is specific on what their objective are, the scope of the target participants is clear, and the title is short but informative. We also had to be careful in coming up with a new idea. In the title name, the effectiveness of MTAP in the STEM students of Arellano University Andres Bonifacio Campus, we have to think about how are we going to execute the whole process. We need to study the method of collecting data and who will be our target participants in advance. If we're planning to know its effectiveness by comparing students who took MTAP and those who are not, the paper will be wrong. If this was your method, it will be a comparative research instead of a qualitative one. This is why we also had to be familiar with the different types of research so our methods will be precisely correct before coming up with a final title. Lesson number three. 
Preliminary Pages The preliminary page is the first page to be written in a research paper that serves as a short overview of the topic from the start to the finished product of the paper. The preliminary pages will consist of the following. A title page. The format must be aligned in the middle, must consist of title, where is it presented for, what is this requirements for, the researcher's name, and the date when the paper was finished. Researcher's name must be in alphabetical order based on their surnames. Approval sheet. The section of approval or grading of the whole paper. This is the proof of approval from the members who will prompt such questions and give the researchers a score on the defense panel or what we call the panelists. Acknowledgement. The part where the researchers will give appreciation or words of gratitude to those who contributed to the study of our research. Not to the researchers themselves, but to the people who guided, gave ideas and suggestions, and collaborated their knowledge into the making of the paper. Dedication Dedication is always a personal acknowledgement of the researchers to their loved ones, which means that they can write any individual's name even when it is unrelated to the topic. Abstract The summary of the research paper and abstract is very informative. Even when the readers haven't fully read the whole paper yet, they will know what the topic's all about through writing an intelligible abstract. Table of contents A general overview of the contents of the research study and a guide on what pages can a certain section be found. List of tables and figures A table of content for the table and figures. Lesson number 4 Chapter 1 The Problem and its Background Chapter 1 is considered the fundamental part of a research paper because the parts written there will be used as a guide for the making of the whole research paper. We cannot write other chapters without its first chapter since the content on the first part such as the objective, statement of the problem, significance of the study, and so much more will help the researchers be mindful of what method they should conduct and reminds them why do they choose this certain topic in the first place. Most content in the upcoming chapters will revolve around the content in chapter 1. Just like how the statement of the problem can help formulate questions for interviews in chapter 3 and can even serve as the main idea to look for in the review of related literature in chapter 2. When mentioning an idea that was from other authors, don't forget to always save and cite their sources and to also rephrase the base text. The parts of chapter 1 are the following. Introduction First paragraph shall be the introductory statement of chapter 1, where you give a brief description about what are the contents that will be found in this chapter. The second paragraph under the subheading of the introduction will consist of the general idea of the study. The third paragraph presents support for the general statement, which is the problem and the importance of the study for the society. Fourth paragraph states the reason why did the researchers become interested in the study. Researchers must use deductive method in writing the introduction and do their best to convince the readers to read further or to gain interest in your research. Background of the study Sometimes this is included already in the introduction of the study in undergraduate research. It provides a history of the topic, the other methods are being compared or tested, and the subjects of the study. Setting of the study gives information about the location where the study had been conducted. Additionally, it can have regarding the history of the private university where the researchers are enrolled, the town where the respondents live, etc., and why the researchers conduct their study at that location. Theoretical Framework It presents the theoretical basis of the study, which can be based on an established learning principle or theory that can contribute to the meaning of the study. Theoretical framework can also be based on the statement of the problem. There should be at least two theories. Then after stating the information about the theory, the last paragraph will connect their ideas to your study. Conceptual framework A set of illustrated ideas about the process undertaken by the researchers in conducting the study. In this example, the paradigm that the researchers use is the input process output or the IPO approach. Conceptual framework can be based on the statement of the problem and the theoretical framework. The input contains the variables of the study, while the process identifies the methods of investigation used. Then the output reveals the results derived from the investigation of the study. Here are the further elaboration of each box. Sometimes, the conceptual framework is called the backbone of a research study, for it will guide the researchers in the flow of their plan for conducting this study. Without the conceptual framework, this research won't be properly written in chronological order, 
might lose the idea of what the main topic really is. And this research study will not be finished in such a hasty manner if the conceptual framework has not been constructed in chapter 1 or at the beginning of the study. Statement of the problem, usually stated in one broad statement followed by specific questions that relate to the given problem. Researchers will be the one to provide answers to the problem based on their existing knowledge about the topic. The question should not just be answerable by yes or no. The answers must be elaborated and descriptive. Here, they should arrange the questions in a logical order and avoid asking questions that are not related or won't be included in the scope of the study. Statement of the problem will be based on the title and will be your guide on what topic to look for in chapter 2. Assumption it is more on what we think or what we assume the answer will be for the statement of the problem that is accepted as true even without any proof yet. Significance of the study It tells why the study is important in some field or the benefit for some people such as students, future researchers, teachers, etc. Scope and limitation States what is the coverage of the study. Limitations specify certain constraints in the study which are the characteristic of a research design that are out of your control but can influence your research finding. The format can be first, what exactly is the purpose, then give the timeline, and lastly, where did the study took place. Definition of term Defining the terms used in the paper and is arranged in an alphabetical order, don't forget to add periods at the end of every sentence, Unfamiliar terms should be defined in the definition of terms and not the terms that are commonly known. Last lesson for the third quarter will be Lesson 5, the making of Chapter 2 or the review of related literature. Literature are published materials for public use, such as books, magazines, encyclopedias, journals, articles. While studies are the unpublished and for personal use materials, while studies are the unpublished and for personal use materials such as theses, research papers, manuscripts, and dissertation. Foreign materials that are printed outside the Philippines, while local refers to the material that are printed inside the Philippines. Review of related literature consists of the ideas of order who conducted a similar or a material that is related to the study. It is a discussion of facts and principles that are divided into four review of related literature section. Parts of the chapter 2 are the following. This is the order of writing local and foreign literature and study. After mentioning the author, state the title from them. Then add a little explanation about the content of the existing study that you had used. Afterward, connect the existing study to your current study by using the statement relates or connects to the study because Getting sources from Wikipedia is not as reliable and it's not very recommended since anyone can edit there with or without any credentials. It is better if most studies in literature are at least recent 5 years. You can have at least 3 to 5 sources on both foreign and local review of related literatures. The review of related literature should be based on the sequence of the statement of the problem. Avoid being plagiarized by paraphrasing. You can use any plagiarism checker tool like this online to check if your content is plagiarized or not. 15% of plagiarism is allowed, however, it is better if it is less than 10% or zero at all. This is one shortcut to look for a free sources for chapter 2 in a fast way. Number 1. Go to Google Scholar. Number 2. Search your desired article. Number 3. Copy the code in the digital object identifier. Number 4. Then go to Sci-Hub, then paste the digital object identifier. Number 5. Now, the document is free. Moving on to the last part of Chapter 2, which is the reference. Primary sources provide raw information and first-hand evidence. Examples include interview, transcripts, statistical data, and works of art. A primary source gives you direct access to the subject of your research. Secondary sources provide second-hand information and commentary from other researchers. Examples include journal articles, reviews, and academic books. A secondary source describes, interprets, or synthesizes primary sources. The American Psychological Association style is originally a set of rules that authors use when submitting papers for publication in the journals of the APA. Modern Language Association style is the leading style of documentation for literary research 
as well as academic papers in the humanities field. Here are the difference between the two citation formats. However, as a STEM student, I'm only going to discuss the APA format. Here are the citation formats for the American Psychological Association. Thank you for watching and good luck!